tons of new species uncovered each year. And this year didn't break this rule. In this journey, we will revisit the highlights of the second half of August 2021. So fasten your seatbelts, and here we go. For this first stop, we go 71 million years in the past to meet a very distinctive and iconic dinosaur, Carnotaurus, but more precisely Carnotaurus sastre. In August 2021, a paper has been published by Christoph Hendricks and Phil R. Bell concerning the abelsaurid skin composition. In fact, there was some speculation about the possible presence of feathers on it. However, thanks to a detailed description of the theropods integuments, the researchers have found that the feature scales are distributed rather randomly, counter to previous interpretations, and have multiple forms. They also speculate about a thermoregulation role that the skin could have played. We are here to meet a member of a species of which has been described an exceptionally well-preserved specimen. And it isn't a dinosaur. No, it's a pterosaur, and not a big one. Tupindactylus is its name. In fact, the unveiled specimen is not only complete, but also articulated and associated with the remarkable preservation of soft tissues, which makes it the most complete tapiarid fossil thus far. It is regarded as an adult, which helps classifying it as exactly a tupa navigans due to its vertical supraprimaxillary bony process and rounded parietal crest. This crest, like for most other pterosaurs, serves as a sexual display to attract females. These individuals are enjoying the fresh water as much as they can until their next migration. They live amongst giant spinosaurids called irritators, piscivorous dinosaurs, These lands should soon find their usual greenness. By the way, this specimen has been found during the police raid after an investigation of a legal fossil trip. We can't stay here for too long, so let's now take our flight to the late Cretaceous and explore new horizons in a different environment. During this time, the oceans were populated with a high diversity of creatures, of which giant sea turtles, plesiosaurs, sharks and also mosasaurs. We are now going to take a deep dive, so be careful and stay alert. Researchers at the University of Cincinnati identified a new species of Mosasaurus. The finder, a professor and his students, have named it Mosasaurus everhartrum. The marine reptile lived in what is today western Kansas, but back then was the western interior seaway, a vast expanse of water splitting North America in half during the middle and end of the Cretaceous. The newly discovered species marks only the second species in its genus, Actinosaurus. At first, the fossilized jaw has been suspected of belonging to a platycarpus, but a mix of intuition and further research allowed the professor to find that in fact it was another species, a new one. On 
On August 23rd, a paper has been published regarding the nerve sensors of T-Rex's jaw. The study concluded that, quote unquote, the nerves in the mandible of Tyrannosaurus rex is more complexly distributed than those of any other dinosaur studied to date, and comparable to those of modern day crocodiles and tactile foraging birds, which have extremely keen senses. These nervous senses probably served to detect different organs of their prey, letting them rather delicately pick specific ones. This, however, is only speculation, and its function could have been radically different. What's certain, however, is that our perception of T-Rex has not finished to change. To end this journey, let's mention a paper published in the Canadian Journal of Earth Sciences regarding an anatomical comparison made between two brain cases of Daspletosaurus. More specifically, it is a comparison of Daspletosaurus thoracus and a specimen that could have been new distinctive species. Multiple anatomical differences have been found, such as differences in the olfactory tract, but also a longer common carotid duct and multiple other very specific ones. However, not only differences have been found in this comparison. In fact, some characteristics could actually prove the unicity of the two specimens under a single species. Furthermore, we know that such changes could be attributed to a difference in age. In conclusion, more similar comparisons have to be made to comfort the idea of such an anatomical diversity within the Tyrannosauridae family. Thank you for following me in this journey, and thanks to Edge for the invitation. It has truly been a pleasure for me to participate in this year's Rewind. Stay tuned for the future uploads of the other participants, and see you soon I hope on my channel for future projects like this.